everybody. Welcome to Believer's Church. How's everyone doing this morning? Come on. You doing all right? Welcome everyone here today. Let's give glory to the Lord. We trust in Him. We praise Him. Let's sing it out. Here we go. I'm in a fight, not physical. I'm in a war, but not with this world. You are the light that's beautiful. I want more. I want all that's yours. Sing it out, church. Joy unspeakable that won't go away. And just enough strength to live for today. So I never have to worry what tomorrow will bring. My faith is on solid rock. I'm counting on God. Here we go. I'm in a fight, not physical, yeah. I'm in a war, but not with this world. You are the light that's beautiful. I want more. I want all that's yours, yeah. Joy unspeakable that won't go away. And just enough strength to live for today. So I never have to worry what tomorrow will bring. On solid rock, I'm counting on God. I'm counting on, 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 I'm counting on God. Oh, yeah, put it up, put it up. Oh, we trust the Lord our God. Come on, sing. And the miracle of Christ in me is the mystery that sets me free. I'm nothing like I used to be. Just open up your eyes. You'll see. Yeah. And the miracle of Christ in me is the mystery that sets me free. I'm nothing like I used to be. Just open up your eyes, you'll see. Come on, put it up. Joy unspeakable that won't go away. And just enough strength to live for today. So I never have to worry what tomorrow will bring. My faith is on solid rock. I am counting on God. I am counting on, I am counting on God. I am counting on, I am counting on God. that won't go away and just enough strength to live for today so I never have to worry what tomorrow will bring my faith is on solid rock I'm counting on God I'm counting on 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 I'm counting on God. Come on, let's give him some praise this morning. Woo! Hey! All right. Awesome, awesome. And welcome, everybody, to Believer's Church. We are a home of authentic Christianity expressed in love, acceptance, and forgiveness. And thank you, everybody, for joining us here online as well as in the house today. This is a wonderful weekend. It's a great time together as we praise the King of Kings and show him our gratitude. So let's do that right now. Feel free to lift your hands to the heavens, sing with all you have, even feel free to dance and shout. But you're just proclaiming that the goodness of the Lord in your life when you do those things in your own way, in your own hallelujah. So let's just take this time right now and do that. Say, Lord, I give it all to you because that's all that I have, God. Lord, I don't have anything that's good enough monetary-wise 
I don't have anything in this world that I can give you, Lord, except all of me. And so I do, and I lay it down right here at your feet, Jesus, and I show you my gratitude. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. you again and again. 
praise to our God, yes. In your own words, just take a moment or two, church, and just give it all to Jesus right now. Lift up your voice, lift up your song, lift up your praises, and say, God, we love you. Jesus, we adore you. We bless your holy name. That's all we have, God. And that's all you ask, Lord God, because you know there's nothing we can do that's enough. You just ask for us to give it all. And so we do, Lord. We bless you because you are worthy, you are holy. You are glorious. You are glorious. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, we love you, Jesus. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king, oh no. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, oh hallelujah. Yeah. Holy, holy, yeah. Amen. We bless you today and always, Jesus, showing you our gratitude. That's all we have to give. That's all you ask, God. And so that's what we're going to do. We surrender all. We love you, and we bless you, and we shine our light for you. It's in your name we pray and we praise. Everybody says amen. And before you sit down, give another big, big shout of praise to Jesus. All right. Woo! Yay! All right. All right. Amen. You may be seated, and let's share with you what's happening here at Believer's Church. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad you are here with us today. My name is Laura, and I've got some announcements to share with you. While I do that, please take out your communication card and begin to fill it out. If you're watching online, we have linked a virtual card in the comments for you to click and fill out as well. These communication cards help us stay connected and are the easiest way for you to sign up for events, next steps, and indicate when you reach spiritual milestones like salvation and wanting to be baptized. If you need a handout or a pen, please raise your hand and an usher will bring one to you. If it is your first or second time here, we want you to bring your communication card over to the Welcome Center after the service today. If it's your first time, we want to give you a Believer's t-shirt. And if it's your second time, we want to give you a Believer's travel coffee mug. If it's not your first or your second time here, you can turn your card into the offering baskets when they come around later in the service. If you flip your card over, you'll see a sign up for Next Step membership happening this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. In this class, you'll learn everything you need to know about membership at Believers. You can find more information about all of your next steps in your handout or at believerstatesboro.com. At the bottom there, you'll see a sign up to serve at our fair booth. The Kiwanis Oguchi Fair has hundreds of people go through each day, and we have the opportunity to shine God's light at the fair. So, if you'd like to serve at the booth, sign up today. We also want to remind you about Family Fun Day coming up on Sunday, October 30th. We want you to bring your family and invite some families you know to join us for this special day of fun. You will need a family pass to get in. 
To get a family pass, you must attend one of the services 9 or 11 a.m. that day. So invite your friends to join us for a service so they can get their pass that day as well. To make Family Fun Day possible, we need your help. We have candy donation buckets outside of the sanctuary door, and we need you to bring bags of candy for us to give away to all the kids who attend Family Fun Day. We appreciate each of you bringing a bag or two to give every child who attends our awesome Family Fun Day experience. Finally, we want to invite you to be part of the choir for this year's Christmas musical. Choir practices will begin next Sunday, October 23rd at 4 p.m. and continue on the Sundays leading into December. If you like to worship and want to help us celebrate Christmas, sign up on your communication card today. Thank you for filling out your cards today, and don't forget to fill out your virtual card if you're watching online. How many of you like to go camping? Anybody? Hey, I love this time of the year. Best time for going camping. Thank you for not being camping this morning, but thank you for being in church today. Welcome to Believer's Church. We're so glad that you are here today. But we're in a series called Be Delight, and you may have noticed our theme is sort of a camping theme because we looked at the scripture that said that we were going to shine bright like stars in the sky. And there's something about going camping, getting out in the wilderness or getting out into the woods where you get away from all the light pollution and suddenly the stars seem to shine brighter than ever, which just encourages us because we know when the world is a dark place that we shine brighter as the stars in heaven and the stars of the sky. But one of the things that we all love about camping is the campfire. Would you agree? Because if you don't have a campfire, you're just like sleeping outside, right? So we want to have a campfire so that we're really camping and some of my fondest memories as a child is uh, sitting around the campfire with my family or sitting around the campfire with my friends, my church friends, maybe our youth group, all sitting around the campfire. And it was a place of warmth. It was a place to entertain our guests. It was a place to share stories. It was a place to pray together, to sing together, to fellowship together. Uh, you may remember some of the, I can tell, let me tell you how old you are if you remember this song around the campfire. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Oh, yeah, you're feeling some of them, those memories coming back. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, thank you. Just thank Jesus you were young. But anyway, so, uh, so we would sit around the campfire, we'd sing these songs and have a great time together. You know, it's also, think about it, it's always the central location, too, when you're camping because during the day you may go on a hike or you may go out to the lake or you may, you know, go do whatever, but... At night, everybody would congregate back around the campfire. It was sort of the, the central location. But also, not only that, but it was normally the place where you get fed because you're hungry. You know, so you get all this good campfire food. You get your hot dogs, your hamburgers, whatever it may be. You get your roasted marshmallows around the campfire. Oh, don't forget s'mores, right? The s'mores. And that's not a memory for me as a child. I never had a s'more when I was a child. That's something I learned to eat in adulthood. So I don't know. So there you go. Do you call it neglected childhood or whatever? But we never had a s'more, but we did have roasted marshmallows. So uh, you have all these warm memories about a campfire. And why am, why am I talking about a campfire today? Because when I think about the church, I think about the church is a lot like a campfire. It's the central location where we all come together to, sh to fellowship together, to share love, to care for one another, to share our stories, to a place to entertain the guests that we are inviting in come to the campfire, but also it is a place for people to be fed. So I want you to think about this. The church is like the campfire where people come to be fed. As a matter of fact, I want you to turn in Scripture with me where Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000 men, and that's not counting the children and the ladies in the crowd. And uh, Jesus also walked on the water with his disciples, but everybody didn't have the privilege of seeing that. And when the boat landed on the other side of the shore, a large crowd of people that had been fed came to see Jesus. 
And we're going to read this story in John chapter 6, verses 32 through 35. We see that Jesus had fed these people with nothing more than two small loaves, I mean five small loaves of bread and two fish. And in John 6, 32 and 35, it says, Jesus said to them, Verily, truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you true bread from heaven. So here's what happened. When Jesus fed to some 15,000 people, a lot of the Jewish people there had a belief that the Messiah, when he came, he would be like Moses, and how Moses sent food down in the wilderness, or God sent food through Moses, how the manna fell in the wilderness, that the Messiah would also feed people physical bread. And Jesus said, now let me just kind of stop here because it's not, I know you came back, you came back for more food. You're looking for what we call the Hebrew Happy Meal. You came back for some more food, but no, I, I've, got, I've got something better. I've got life that I want to give you, and it comes down from the Father. Verse 33, for the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. It's going to give life to the entire world. Well, look what they said in verse 34. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Jesus said, no, stop, stop. You're still thinking about physical food. I've got something that's better than physical food. I'm talking about spiritual food. So then Jesus declares to them in verse 35, I am the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is the bread of life. And listen, maybe you're here today, and you're hungry, and you're thirsty for something more than what you're experiencing in your life. That's a soul hunger, and that's a good thing. Because when you're hungry, and you receive Jesus as the bread of life, you'll never be hungry. You'll never go thirsty again. I know a lot of people in our world, they're looking for a way to heal their souls, to restore their souls. They're trying every kind of physical thing possible, but nothing will ever satisfy other than Jesus. So Jesus said, I am the bread. I am the true bread of life. I'm the only one that's going to bring spiritual satisfaction. I'm the only one that's going to restore your soul. So he's not talking about physical food or physical hunger, but he's talking about soulish hunger and a food that will last forever and ever and ever. So just like we would come to the campfire to feed our guests, when we come to the church, to the house of God, we want to serve people the ultimate meal, and the ultimate meal is Christ Jesus. We want them to ingest, we want them to eat of the bread of life. So I want you to kind of get your notes out right now, if you will. Uh, go ahead and pull them out. They're in your handout. If you don't have one of these, raise your hand. The ushers and greeters will get you a handout. Uh, they're standing by right now. If you just lift your hand, they'll bring you one. They'll get you an ink pen or whatever you may need. Also, you guys that are watching online, welcome. Glad that you're here with us today. Hey, welcome out there in Montana. Welcome over in Bethlehem. Welcome all you that watch every week. We're glad that you are with us today. But you can also get your notes by going to the Bible app, you version, uh, clicking on events, and type in Believer's Church or Believer's Statesboro, and your notes will pop up there as well. But as we are sitting around the campfire, I want you to know today that we have three chairs. And these three chairs need to be present at every single meal. And this is the way it's going to work. One-third of these chairs should be the mature. So one-third of the church should be the mature every Sunday when we come together around a campfire. Another third should be the new believer, the baby Christians, if you will. And that's not a derogatory term. It's just that you're new and you're starting off like a baby and the Lord. But also, don't forget about around the circle at the campfire on every Sunday at every meal, you need to have the hellbound. You need to have the lost. This is the dope smoking, skirt chasing, uh, drug sniffing, you know, what, uh, sexual and moral people. They need to be here in the house. And some of you are thinking, whoo, I'm here. I I'm glad I'm welcome. That, yeah, you're here. So it's okay. And, and we get the wrong idea here, but all three of these chairs should be present at all times in order for our church to be healthy. This is what we're talking about, church health. So I want us to get this because a lot of people think, a healthy church is going to be made up of all mature believers, everybody mature, everybody walking to God. That's a great place to be, but that's where we want you to be. But it's not just church and just for mature believers. People say, well, a mature church, a, a healthy church would be the new, full of new Christians because a lot of people got born again. 
And that would be good, too. We want a lot of new people here, people that just received Jesus as their Savior. Now, when it comes to the hellbound, people get confused because they think, oh, no, these guys, these, these guys are not welcome in the church. They have to receive Jesus as their Savior first. And when they receive Jesus as their Savior, then they are welcome in the church. Oh, no, they're welcome here right now today. And every meal that we eat, these three chairs should be present. So let's talk about the three chairs for just a minute. Uh, chair number one, let's talk about the hellbound. All right, so let me just tell you that lost people matter to God. Y'all do realize that, right? And because lost people matter to God, lost people matter to us. Jesus said in Luke 19, 10, he said, he came to do what? To seek and to save the lost. So Jesus, when you look at his life, he always wanted the sinners at the table with him. He would always eat with them and dine with them because he wanted them to experience the true bread of life, to ingest it and receive it. So when the lost come to the table and they ingest the true bread of life, they receive Jesus as their Savior, then they move over to this chair, and this is the new Christian. This is those that have just received Jesus, the, the babies in Christ Jesus. And they're also learning how to ingest and eat the Word. We're supposed to help them in any way we can. You know how you do it for a baby? You kind of spoon feed the baby. You say, open up. Here comes the train. Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo. You know, and they, they get the food. So you teach the baby how to eat. So if you're new in Christ Jesus, you're feeling, I'm overwhelmed. There's so much stuff I don't know. It's okay. God will put you in the school of accelerated learning. And we're here to help you. We're to help you learn how to eat the bread of life. And we're here to help you grow in the Lord. So as the new Christian continues to eat the word of life and they grow in the Lord, then they move over here to the mature chair. And yes, this is where we all want to be. We all want to be conformed into the image of Christ Jesus, fully walking in the Lord. I would call this self-feeders. You know, we know how to eat and ingest the Word of God. So here we are as believers, we're eating and we're ingesting the Word of God as mature Christians. Now, I'll just tell you, you know, there are a lot of churches in this town, there are a lot of Bible studies in this country, in this city, in this county, all around the world that are full of believers that are eating and ingesting the Word of God. And we love that, we want that. And we need to be doing that. We need to be consuming and then devouring God's Word eating that true bread of life. But at some point, we got to realize in order to be healthy, because we want to be a healthy church, we want to be a healthy people, we need to do what our doctor tells us every time we go to see him in his office. Every time we go to see our doctor in his office, he says, hey, you want to be healthy. It's all about your diet. And what's the other word that you don't like? And what? Exercise. Everybody say diet, diet. and exercise. It's about diet and exercise. So it is with us in Christ Jesus. We want to ingest the Word of God. We want to eat the Word of God. But every now and then, we got to push away from the table, push away from the campfire. we got to stretch our spiritual muscles, and we've got to exercise. What does James 1.22 say? Do not merely listen to the Word and deceive who? Are you deceiving anyone else? No. Are you deceiving yourself? Yep, do not just listen to the Word, but do what it says. Do what it says. Jesus said, if you hear the Word and don't do what it says, you're like a man that builds his house on sand and your house is going to collapse. But if you do the Word and hear the Word and do what it says, you're going to be like a man that builds his house on a rock, a strong foundation. So we need to make sure that we are not just ingesting the Word of God, eating, 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 feed me, feed me, feed me. I want more, I want more and getting spiritually bloated, uh, we're getting this kind of fat in the Word, but we need to make sure that we are also serving the others in the church. So we as mature Christians, we look at the, the new believer, and we say, hey, how can I share some of this bread with you? How can I share the life of Jesus with you? And the more mature you get in Christ Jesus, the more you become conformed into the image of Christ, you're going to begin to have Jesus' heart. And you're going to begin to love the things that Jesus loves. And as you love the things that Jesus loves, you're going to be madly in love with lost people. You're going to want to do everything you can to help lost people come to know Christ Jesus because Jesus 
loves the lost, therefore we love the lost as well. These are the three chairs that we're going to be dealing with. So here's the beautiful cycle. So the mature Christian, because now he has a heart for the lost, he goes out and he finds the hellbounders and he brings them into the house of God. He brings them to the campfire. He says, come on, we got something good for you here. We want you to receive Christ Jesus. So those who were once in bondage to the devil, called in the trap of the devil, the sons of disobedience, those that are in darkness, those with the blinded eyes, the mature believer, this is what we've been teaching you and be the light. We go out and we bring them to the table. We bring them in so they can eat and they can receive and they can ingest the bread of life. And when they receive Jesus as their Savior, they ingest the word of life. Then they move over here to what? The new believer chair. Now they're beginning to grow in the Lord. They're beginning to get trained. They're beginning to understand things. And then as they grow in the Lord even farther, they become a mature believer again. They become mature. And then a mature believer pushes back from the table and goes and serves the lost. So you have this beautiful cycle where we should always, in a healthy church, have the lost coming in, receiving Jesus, becoming babes in Christ, New believers growing up and becoming mature, but not stopping here. After they become mature, go back and begin to minister to the lost again. And you have this beautiful cycle that just keeps going and going and going. This what I'm drawing for you right here, church. Listen to me. This is a healthy church. This is what God desires for a believer's church. This is what God desires for all of us to do so that we can continue to feed people the bread of life. Now, think about this. If you're going to have a party or a dinner party at your house, or if you're going to have a campfire and you're going to invite some people over, you're going to think about several things. And uh, as you're, you're thinking about this, you're going to think about the invitation, how you're going to invite people to come. You're going to think about the preparation to get ready for it. And you're going to think about the presentation. So let's put that in our notes today. The invitation, the preparation, and the presentation. You're going to have to do all three so that people will come and eat and enjoy the meal. So we're going to go backwards. We're going to start with the presentation first. Let's kind of deal with that first. At Believer's Church, every Sunday we have this awesome opportunity to share the bread of life, the ultimate food, and listen to me, the ultimate food deserves the ultimate presentation. We need to be presenting the bread of life, and as we present it, we want to present it in a very creative way, a very compelling way, and we want to present it in a way that people can actually understand and get it and connect with it. We want their lives to be transformed and changed. We're going to do the very best we can at this presentation to do what Jesus said to do. In John 21, 17, Jesus said, feed my sheep. I want everyone to say, feed my sheep. Say it together. Feed my sheep. What are we supposed to be doing? Feeding the sheep. All three chairs are supposed to be feeding the sheep. So this is what Jesus has called us to do. Now, think about this. Put this in your notes. We must talk to all three chairs. We must talk to all three chairs. So here's the question. Here's the tension that should be in every church on Sunday mornings, uh, every single Sunday. We should be asking ourselves, all right, how much do we angle Sunday service to the mature believer? And how much do we angle Sunday service to the new babe in Christ? And how much do we angle Sunday sermon to the lost? And you know, some churches go overboard, and it's all about the mature believer, and it's just so far in advance, they go deeper and deeper, and they're losing everyone else in the process. They're overboard with just catering to the needs of the mature Christian or, you know, maybe they're in a, in a process and newbies are never really growing. Or, you know, they come over here and everything's about, you know, going out and, and just reaching the lost and the unsaved. But they never give anyone an opportunity to be matured and grow in the Lord. So, it, it's a tension that we all have to deal with. And we have to deal with this every Sunday. You know, how do we do it? How, how do I, as a preacher, stand in front of people, a large crowd of people in two services, understanding that all three chairs are here and make sure that everybody's getting some of the bread of life and making sure that they're growing on in this process. So you have to think about how you angle it, you know. So the, uh, the new 
The, the mature Christian oftentimes is saying, they're saying, feed me, feed me, feed me. I call it a get up in the eye chair, not high chair, but eye chair. It's about I, 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 me, 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 feed me, feed me, feed me. And let me just say this. I'll just say it one time. I won't dwell on it. Of these three chairs, who complains the most in church? Absolutely. This chair right here, they're the, they're the biggest complainers. They're the ones that are always finding something wrong. You're not doing enough for me. You're not feeding me. You're not taking care of me. I need more. I need more of this. I need more of that. It's too hot in here. It's too cold in here. I need you to ushers and greeters aren't rubbing my feet. You know, I, I, need, I need more. I need more, more, more. And look, you know, I say, listen, please understand this of all sincerity. My job is not to feed you the Word of God my job is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. In other words, I'm like Affleck. I'm supplemental. <laughs> I, 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 you know, you're going to have your insurance already, and Affleck's going to cover the rest. You're going to be self-feeding. You're reading the Word of God at home. You're receiving the Word of God. You're praying at home, and you come together, and I just give you a little boost and an exhortation, and my job is to equip you to get up out of this chair and to do the works of the ministry. So as a mature Christian, you should be doing whatever you could do to minister to the new babes in Christ. So as a mature Christian, you should probably be discipling a new believer, taking them to coffee, taking them to lunch, hanging out with them, having them over in your home, helping them to become mature, teaching them what you know. Discipleship is simply us teaching others what we know. You know, you should be the one that are leading the life groups. You should be leading a life group. You should be the one that's showing up to the marriage group because your marriage is so good, the new babes are struggling with it, and they need to have their marriage improved, so you're going to show up to encourage them. You're the ones that should be praying for these guys and everything that's going on. So there's lots of, there's, you're the ones that should be serving. When Pastor Mike talks about hey, we're going to go out into the community and we're going to do serve the borough. We're going to do practical acts of kindness with intentionality to show the love of Jesus, to win people to Jesus. He should almost get knocked over by all the mature Christians that are running over there to sign up to go out and serve lost people. Did y'all hear that? So if you call yourself mature, you better be teaching somebody else. You better be leading a life group, discipling somebody. You better be serving the borough. You better be doing all you can to get up out of the chair. It's not just feed me, feed me, feed me. Hey, 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 I'm fat Albert. You know, you want to get out there and you want to just not get spiritually bloated, but you want to go out and you want to serve other people. Y'all understand that? We got to understand that. You got to understand what we're trying to do there. So also the uh, think about the new believer. Pastor Scott, why are you preaching on baptism again? I've heard that baptism sermon seven times already since I've been at this church. I'm preaching on baptism again because hellbounders are coming in and receiving Jesus and becoming new believers. They need to understand what baptism is all about. Why are you preaching on tithing? Because they need to understand how to tithe. Oh, by the way, some of you guys do too. All right, so anyway, so, uh, you know, the, the why, why are you teaching on forgiveness again? Because these hellbounders got a lot of forgiveness. Now they're a new believer and they're trying to sort through all this mess. So, you know, some of the sermons you're going to hear over and over and over again. And all I can say is memorize them. Preach them yourself. Preach them at the coffee shop. Preach them at work, you know, so that we can help other people. And then we've always got to be thinking about that Jesus loves lost people. We've got to be doing whatever we can do to bring lost people to Christ Jesus. So we've got to speak to the chairs. We've got to speak to the chairs. So, as far as the presentation goes, some of the things we try to do here, you can put this in your notes, creative communication. Jesus was a highly creative communicator. I don't know if you realize that or not. And um, he, had the, uh, he would present the gospel message in various different ways. Now, it was the same theology every time, but he would use different methodologies according to the circumstance and the situation was at. You remember one time Jesus drew on the sand one time Jesus preached to people from a boat. One time Jesus said, look, consider the lilies out on this field. Another time Jesus picked up a child and said, let me tell you something about this child. Jesus looked at a building that had fallen down and talked about building your house on the rock rather than saying Jesus saw a sower 
out sowing seeds, and he talked about sowing seeds. So Jesus was very creative in his communication. He would use parables, uh, word pictures. He would use humor, and he was very creative. And why would you do that? Well, one of the reasons we want to be creative, one of the reasons Jesus was creative, because creativity helps people remember the good news. Creativity helps people remember the message. Creativity helps people remember the word of encouragement. So we're going to strive here at Believer's Church to create the Be Creative Communicators. The next thing put in your notes is on Sunday morning, I want you to understand it's always going to be about the bottom line. And you say, what do you mean by that? Well, our goal is to have one key concept, one key thought that everything that we do on Sunday morning is going to drive home that bottom line. That would include our pre-service songs, our worship, our praise, our prayer times, the word that we communicate that day. We're trying to drive home a bottom line because we want people to get it. And one of my goals is always this, that on Monday morning, if you have a break at work and people, maybe you're in an office building, you go to the water cooler, maybe you go to the snack machine, and someone says, hey, did you go to church yesterday? And you say, yeah, I was there. And they say, what, what was the sermon about? I don't want you to go, um, uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, well, I went to church, you know, I, where I, you know, I don't really know what it was about. But I want you to say, hey, it's about Jesus, God. That's what, that's what all the elementary kids do back there. Hey, what's the answer to this question? Jesus, God, you know, they know if they say that, they're going to get it right 90% of the time. So, you know, but we, we don't want to do that in the workplace, right? We've got to be more mature than that. So, I want you to say, yesterday's sermon was about bump, bump, bump. Let's get it down. So, maybe if someone asks you tomorrow, hey, what, was, what did the preacher preach about yesterday? So, you're going to say, he preached about the church being like a campfire with three chairs around it. It should be present at every service. At every service we get together, we should have the one-third mature, one-third new uh, believer, and one-third lost coming together to eat the bread of life. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line that we want you to get today. So I, I just told you what the bottom line was today, but every Sunday we want you to get the bottom line. Another thing, it's all about Sunday's meal. Put that in your notes. Um, the, the Sunday meal. Just like it used to be in the South, I don't know um, how it was if you guys that were raised in the North, but it used to be in the South, and I really miss this. Sunday was the day for the big meal. You know, after church, the whole family would get together. We'd eat. Sometimes we'd eat at our house of our family, or we'd go over to Grandma's house. We'd eat with all my cousins and everything. But it was all about the big meal where everybody came together as a family and ate together. So, so it should be on Sunday morning here at the church that this service on Sunday morning should be the big meal, the big ultimate presentation of the bread of life, and we should be coming together. So it's all about Sunday and bringing people in for this ultimate presentation of the gospel of Christ Jesus. And so we're going to eat together on Sunday morning. So understand this, at Believer's Church, we're always going to have a high priority on Sunday morning. Now, other things are vitally important. Life groups are vitally important. I taught Monday, uh, Wednesday night, Next Step Life Groups, and I wanted people to understand why we do life groups here, how we do life groups. It's important. The EDGE student ministry, it's vitally important. We need that. The children's ministry is vitally important. We're partnering with parents to raise godly children. Our outreach that we do at the fair this week, and as we go out to our city, all that's vitally important, but the main thing has always got to be the big meal that we eat, we come together on Sunday morning, that we get people in the house on Sunday morning where people can eat and feast on the bread of life. So we're going to talk about the, um, the creative communication, the bottom line, and the Sunday meal. Now I want you to look. we got some next steps for you. I see a few new folks out there. Welcome. Glad that you all are with us today. Um, we have next steps that are on your, it's in your notes, and on your communication card. And they're sort of like homework assignments you take home and you work on the message at home. And the first next step, would you make this commitment? You say, I will eat the bread of life. I want you to eat the bread of life. I want you to read that word. I want you to ingest that word. But then I'm going to get up from the campfire and I'm going to serve others. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing not just to eat the bread of life, but are you willing to get up from the campfire and begin to serve other people? Because again, the bread of life, the ultimate meal, it is, it, 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 it's, it's essential that we give it the ultimate presentation. But in order to have the ultimate presentation, 
You know what's required? The ultimate preparation. We got to get prepared for every Sunday, and it rolls around every week. As soon as you get there for another one, we begin to prepare for the week after that. Listen, I'm amazed. I'm always amazed at the time and the energy that Janet puts into cooking a meal that's just consumed in 15 minutes, and it's done and forgot about. Next thing you know, you're putting out the dishes, especially Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's coming up, right? So there's going to be all this prep, the planning, going to the store, buying all the ingredients, run over to Metter, get some fresh, fresh pecans, you know, get some stuff for, you know, the pumpkin pie, get the turkey, uh, when's it going to be on sale, all the, the planning out. Let's go ahead and bake some of these pies tonight before so we're not so pressured that morning. You get up on Thanksgiving morning and food, the aroma of food begins to fill the house and you're hungry and your stomach's growling and you're trying not to eat too much of a breakfast because you want to really consume that Thanksgiving meal. Then all the family comes together and you sit around a Thanksgiving meal. Boom, 15 minutes later, it's done. All right, good deal. Who's going to do the dishes? I'm going to go watch a football game. I think I'm ready for a nap, you know, whatever it may be. So I'm thinking that's a lot of preparation for a meal. Thank you all for doing it. I'm like, thank you, thank you for all you that do that. I appreciate it. I'm not a cook myself. I do appreciate it. Well, you, you know, here at Believer's Church, we work really hard in the preparation time as well. All week long. Now, we love doing it. I'm not complaining, but we work, we, we plan, we get things ready. We're always trying to be very intentional in what we do. And it amazes me. I think it would amaze you if you came down here and you saw the work that goes on during the week here at Believer's Church. And, you know, some of our community service, sometimes we get some community service come in to help us, and they normally quit after a day because we work too hard, you know? And so they would rather go wash dogs or something so, for their community service. So, you know, we, we, do a, we do a lot of work here, but as we, and we love doing it, we as the staff love doing it, but as we're doing it, so should you as Christ followers, you also be doing the prep work as well to get ready for the ultimate presentation on Sunday. So, yeah, you get involved in this process. Well, what can I do? Well, you can begin to pray for the presentation of the bread of life that's going to occur on Sunday morning. You begin to commit that to prayer. Because, see, on Sunday morning, lives are hanging in the balance, the difference between heaven and hell. We gave you several stories lately about people that received Jesus right here in this church and died within a year. You know, so life is hanging in the balance. Eternity is hanging in the balance. So you want to pray about that. You want to pray that the Holy Spirit's going to move and it's going to be an awesome experience that the tech all works great, that everything works, that the, the bathrooms work properly, that the building functions as it should. The praise team has the anointing of God. The preacher preaches with the power of God. You want to begin to pray for all that? You know, you can pray. You can always join us. You can pray at home anytime, but you can join us on Tuesdays for staff prayer at lunchtime from 12 to 1 on Tuesdays. Wednesday nights, we come together from 6 to 6.30 to pray for the services to get prepared for what's going to happen here on Sunday morning, and I do greatly appreciate that. And then before every service at, um, let's see, at 8.30 in the morning, people uh, gather together back there in what we call the red room, and they pray for the service, this first service. So while you're in here, people have prayed for you. And then we get together at 1030, and we pray 30 minutes again before the 11 o'clock service. So there's opportunities to pray. We can never, ever, never, ever, will you ever hear me stand up and say, well, guys, that's enough prayer. Y'all did good. We don't need any more prayer. I'm always going to say, more prayer. We need more prayer. Everything we do must be girded in prayer. What else could you do? Well, you could consider how you could help der to get ready for this presentation how you could help in the preparation process because you could volunteer to do things during the week. You can volunteer to help us get things ready. You say, well, what kind of things could I do? Well, you know, things like buildings and grounds. You know, there's always, constantly, when you have a building, you have two buildings, three buildings, there's constantly always something that needs to be done. If you don't think so, you and I can take a little tour around the church this afternoon and bring your legal pad with you, and I'll give you about eight things that need to be done here at the church. Could be from painting to pulling weeds to fixing a trip hazard, whatever it may be, but that's part of your helping to get the preparation done for the big meal that's coming up, the big preparation. Maybe it's stage design, helping Allie and Joe get these things set up. Uh, somebody's going to have to take this all down. Somebody will have to set up for the next 
series as well. It could be all the handouts, all the paperwork that you have, all the things that we send out in the mail, helping cut, uh, print, get all those things ready, get all those things prepared. Uh, candy, how, you know you can bring candy to help us prepare because we got Family Fun Day coming up, not next week, but the week after. So bringing, just bringing a bag of candy is a way to help prepare for that ultimate presentation of the Bread of Life on Family Fun Day. Crafts, help, maybe helping Valerie get the crafts ready. There's things that need to be cut out. There's things that need to be uh, uh, done. The children's buildings have to be decorated. The youth building has to be decorated. There's a lot of stuff that goes on during the week that you can help with, so feel free to jump in. I know that um, James and Brienne are out of town today, but Brienne, I know she spent two days, two days of working in the craft room, the resource room, getting everything reorganized, because as church life moves on, things tend to get unorganized. So she gave over time and energy for today, for this presentation. She's, not, she's out of town today, but she still did her prep work to get things ready for the children today so that they'll be blessed out in their class. Hey, Wednesday nights, you know, one, one thing we need, we need some Wednesday night ushers and greeters. Somehow Wednesday nights just become thought of as a life group night. It's still a service. We just divide up into groups in here. We still have all, everything that we do on Sundays done here on Wednesday night. So we need ushers and greeters to come in and serve on Wednesday night as well. Again, that's all preparation work for the ultimate presentation. And we are going to commit to you here at Believer's Church. We're going to do all we can do. The staff here is to get ready with you to be prepared so that we can present the gospel to bread of life in a way that people can get it, in a way that they understand. So we want to make sure that we are connecting with all three chairs. And again, this is our challenge. This is our tension. Sometimes we do it better than other times. Sometimes we don't do it so good, but we want to appeal to all three. So we're going to want the, uh, we're going to want the presentation. We're going to want to prepare for the music that connects with people, the, the videos that will connect to people, the drama, the skits. We want that to connect with people as well. Everything we do, we want to make a connection. Now, I'll just throw out that, that word music and just kind of explain to you, in case you don't realize, there are a lot of genres of music, right? A lot of different ones. So let's just take the word gospel. Let's talk, take the word Christian music. Well, you have southern gospel. Well, as we travel along on the Jericho Road. You know, you got, you got that one. You remember that one? And then you got, uh, you've got, you got soul gospel music, like Andre, I don't know, Andre Crouch style. You can tell how old I am by using Andre Crouch or uh, C.C. Wyman, that type of gospel music as well. And then you got contemporary gospel music. So if you just say Christian music, you got three different genres to kind of juggle there to try to, to keep everybody, to keep everybody happy over here, to keep all these people happy. And But, you know, the, the truth of the matter is most people in the world don't listen to any of that. These guys don't listen to that. Man, they love pop music. They like hip-hop. You know, they like uh, the emo music, whatever it may be. You know, they've got, they have different things that they listen to. As a matter of fact, you know what music that probably the most people in Statesboro listen to, what kind of music it is? As a man told me one time, son, there's only two types of music. There's country and Western. Okay, so, yes, there's country, Western music, country music. They're all about country, Western music. So, you've got to think, how are we going to reach these people? How are we going to reach these hellbounders to move into new believers, to move them to mature people in Christ Jesus? You've got to have something for them all. You know, I just want, I want more, I want more praise and worship. I do too. I would love to come in and spend a couple of hours just praising and worshiping every Sunday. I understand that. Uh, but, you know, we also have babies in the nursery that need to be tended to as well. And, you know, we got people that come in that got to understand what this is all about. So, you know, we have special nights for praise and worship. We try to have special times for that as well. We have, uh, we have Bible studies all during the week for those that want to go deeper study the Word of God in a more in-depth level. So we're trying to speak to all three chairs, and I just really need y'all to understand that. I need y'all to understand that we're preparing to speak to all three. Now, here's the bottom line. The preparation takes work. Put that in your notes. As a matter of fact, as you're writing out that word, I'll ask you, how do you spell love? You spell it W-O-R-K, work. You know, you, whenever you love people, you work. 
Jesus said in Matthew 9, 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And what's he say? He says, now pray that God will send in more workers. The harvest is ready to be reaped. I mean, it's ready, but we don't have enough people bringing in the harvest. So we're supposed to be working in the fields, but we'll also be praying that God will bring in more workers as well. The harvest is plentiful, but the problem is the workers are few. So we're going we're gonna to continue to prepare, and I want to just kind of take a moment and applaud all of you that do work so hard. I mean, there, there are, there's a back scenes. I wish you could see what I see every week. There are people to give up their time, their energy, their resources to help us get prepared to feed people the bread of life on Sunday morning. So for all you do, I highly applaud you. Yeah, let's give them a hand. Yeah, good job, Tim. Let's give them a hand. Uh, so, and I want you to know, it breathes life to me. It encourages me. Sometimes I get weary and I get tired and I get discouraged as I'm trying to give the bread of life. Whenever I see you out there doing it, it fires me up. It gets me excited. When I see y'all doing what Jesus has called you to do, it energizes me. So we should all be inspiring one another in that way as well as we all begin to do the work that's required to do. I know this week, you know, I just want to say a special thanks to everybody that worked on the, uh, the fair float. You know, it's always a lot of work, always a lot of preparation, a lot of time goes into that. Those that are going to be helping Pastor Mike, I know he probably worked on the fair booth yesterday. He's probably, knowing Mike, he's got to go back this afternoon. That's a lot of work for Mike to do because Mike works a full-time job. He's got to probably go back this afternoon and do some more work at the fair booth. And then people that have signed up said, I want to just meet people out there at the fair this week as they're coming through the booths. I want just to meet them, give them information about Believer's Church, pray for them, just kind of be there for them. Thank you, guys. That is awesome. Uh, everyone that's getting ready for Family Fun Day, a big day coming up, thank you so much for doing that. Buildings and grounds people, thank you so much for whenever we have a need, we put it out there and you guys show up or you ladies show up to make sure that need is met. So I do want to thank you, but I want everyone to understand this as well. I don't want us to ever understate this, and I want you to understand this. Let's put this, this uh, saying up on the board, Brandon. I want you to have this honor, this, a this attitude and this thought, and it is this. I want you to say, it is an honor to serve on this team. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. Because, see, another thing you can do in a preparation process is to join a ministry team. If you don't know what the ministry teams are all about, not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday night, I'm going to be teaching Next Steps ministry teams. But when you serve on this ministry team, I want you to understand it is an honor that you get to partner together with Jesus to feed the bread of life to people so they can be born again, they can become new believers, and they can mature in the Lord. It is an honor and a privilege. I don't care what team you're serving on, these signs you're going to notice are going to start popping up in the church. We're going to talk about this more next year as well, but I want you to know before I step up here on this stage, I just say, man, Jesus, this is an honor. I'm not griping. I'm not complaining. This is an honor. There's a thousand other people that can do this better than me that you could have chosen to do it, but it's an honor that you have chosen me. If you're serving as an usher, man, it is an honor to serve on this team. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. If you're back changing dirty diapers in the nursery, wait, 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 Jesus, it is an honor. Whoo, Jesus, it's an honor. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me to do this job. So whatever team you're serving on, it is an honor. It is, do y'all agree? I don't know if y'all agree. If it's an honor. It's a blessing. Yes, we get to do this. We get to partner together with Jesus. So it is an honor. It is a blessing. Next step number two is this. It says, I will volunteer to serve on a ministry team. Maybe you need to come to class next, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. I'm going to volunteer to serve on a ministry team doing my part to make Sunday the ultimate presentation of the bread of life. Do y'all want Sunday to be the ultimate presentation of the bread of life? Then you got to do your part. All right, let's, I'm, I'm going to volunteer to serve on a ministry team. Everybody say, doing my part. <laughs> say it again. Doing my part. Say it again, doing my part. Do you have to do all the parts? Just your part. 
Are you doing your part? If you're not doing your part, let's find out what your part is. Let's get you hooked up and get a match of your gifts and your talents so you can do your part as well. So that is the preparation. What's the last thing? We have the, the ultimate meal deserves the ultimate presentation, which requires, you know, the ultimate preparation is required. And then the last thing is you got to have the invitation. Nobody's coming to your party. Nobody's coming to your campfire. Nobody's coming over to eat with you on Thanksgiving unless you do what? You got to invite them to come. That is not a hard concept. You got to invite them to come. You got to invite them to come and eat. You got to invite them to come and ingest, enjoy the meal. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I kind of miss, but remember back in the day that I um, used to go to like Savannah Mall or something, and we would take our kids down there when we were young, and you'd go into food court, and people were always giving out what? Remember? Samples. They'd have samples of toothpick, you know, teriyaki chicken on it or whatever it may be, or a you know, sample of whatever, you know. Or then if you really wanted to have a big night on the town, you'd go by Sam's too. And if you went by Sam's and they had all their free samples and went to the mall and ate those free samples, the meal was done. You know what I mean? You, you go home full and happy. So, you know, we were, uh, I'll never forget, we were at Savannah Mall one time and there was uh, somebody giving out the samples of teriyaki chicken. But what struck me as funny is they were giving them to people in the line at the restaurant to buy the teriyaki chicken. And then there were people that were sitting at the table actually eating a meal they had bought with teriyaki chicken. And the sampler guy was saying, here, have a sample of teriyaki chicken. I'm thinking, well, his boss must have said, you don't come back in here till these things are gone. You know, I don't know what it is, but I'm thinking, that is crazy. Why are you giving samples to people that are already eating the food? But see, we as the church, sometimes we can be just as guilty. We're only giving samples of the bread of life to people that are already eating the bread of life. People that are already ingesting it, people that are already living on it. And we need to make sure that we're not forgetting those that need to come to the table, those that need to come to the campfire, those that need to receive Jesus as their Savior. So, therefore, we must, it is required of us, we must be extending the invitation. We've got to extend the invitation. Jesus said this, John 4, 34, my food, everyone say, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Let's say it again. Say, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. All right, so I'm just going to tell you, if you come to me and you say, feed me, feed me, feed me, I need to go deeper. I got to have more. I'm going to say, are you doing the work of Jesus? Because your food doesn't come from Scott Moore. Your food comes from doing what Jesus asked you to do and finishing his work. Jesus said, my food is to do the will of the Father. Your food is to do the will of the Father. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to give you the word as best I can, but if you're not getting enough, if you're still hungry, I want to ask you, are you doing the will of the Father? Are you doing what he's called you to do? Are you feeding other people the word of life? Are you helping to the new Christian get more mature? Are you helping the hellbound come and receive Jesus? Are you doing the inviting the church? Are you inviting people to come? You need to be doing the will of the Father because Jesus came to seek and save the lost and we're to be partnering together with him to help finish that process. What more can God do? He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross already. What more can Jesus do? Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead to give life. Then Jesus went up into heaven and said, now I'm going to fill you with the promised Holy Spirit. So now the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of you. What more does Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit need to do? I tell you what needs to be done is in us. The ball's been served in our court. It's time for us to hit the ball back. It's time for us to get up and do what Jesus has called all of us to do. And it all begins with this invitation where we invite people to come and enjoy the bread of life. Maybe you're with them in the break room and you don't think they're going to come on Sunday, but you can use one of these examples that we gave you during this series. You can do the bridge and show people how to be born again. You could draw the morality ladder and show them how to be born again. You can use your story 
I used to be this way. I met Jesus. I'm this way now, but you can help people come to know Christ Jesus. Now, as we get involved in the invitation process, one of the greatest things it does for us, it helps us to see that we're part of the big process, that, we're, that we really are the church. You know, one of our core values here at Believer's Church says we choose to be spiritual contributors, not just consumers. It's okay to consume. It's okay to eat at a red light, but we got to contribute as well. And we say this, the church does not exist for us. The church does not exist for us. We are the church, right? We are the church, and we exist for the world. We exist to bring people to Christ Jesus. We exist to help people that don't know Jesus receive Him, become new Christians. We help new Christians become mature believers. We equip mature believers to go out and bring in lost people again, and the cycle continues on. So we got to get involved in that. We've got to understand that we're here for the world. I want to ask you a question today. Who do you know that's hungry? Is there anybody you know that's soul hungry? Their soul's hurting. They're running around in life looking for everything in the world to satisfy them and nothing is. Do you know anybody like that? Can you, can you write down today four people? Just go ahead and get your pen out. Write down four people that need to know Jesus as their Savior. You know, maybe it's your neighbor, your co-workers. Maybe it's a friend. You could have a good friend that doesn't know Jesus, but somehow y'all are friends. And maybe it's even a family member, someone you live with every day or an extended family member. And then I want you to begin to pray for those people and ask Jesus, Jesus, open up an opportunity where I can share with them the bread of life. Because, listen, all eternity hangs in the balance. Nobody's promised tomorrow. We don't know. I need to share them the bread of life as soon as possible. Last next step is this. Next step, number three. I will give samples of the bread of life to the lost. And I will invite at least, here's four, 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 four people to be my guests next Sunday. That's your challenge. Can you invite four people to be your guests next Sunday? Or I'm going to be inviting people to come to Family Fun Day. Listen, Family Fun Day is one of those days where you easy to get people to come. Hey, family, that's next door with three kids. I've noticed that uh, y'all love spending time with your kids. Well, listen, this coming Sunday or next Sunday, and not after this one, at Believer's Church, we're going to come and we're going to have some family worship time together. And then we're going to go out and you're going to get a free ticket. You're going to go out on the lawn and you're going to get uh, hot dogs and you'll get drinks and you're going to get chips. And there's going to be rides for you to ride. Your kids are going to have a great time. It's going to be a real big carnival atmosphere. And we're just going to enjoy Jesus together as a family. And I would love for your family to come and join us. That's an easy invitation there. So who will you go? Who will you invite? Who do you know that is hungry? Invite them to come and receive the bread of life. So church, I, I urge you, I exhort you, continue to grow in maturity in Christ Jesus. Continue to be conformed into his image. But then go out and bring in those that don't know Jesus. Let them eat of the bread of life. Help them as new believers. What can you do to help a new believer? Help them. Help them become mature as well. I can't do this by myself. I need you. I need your help. Now, maybe today you're sitting over here and you're thinking, wow, these people really do concern about people they consider lost. And, um, which means they're, they're kind of concerned about me because I'm lost and I don't know Christ Jesus. I really don't. I don't even know if I believe in God. I could be an atheist or an agnostic and maybe somebody just kind of talked me into coming. Maybe I'm watching online today. But I feel Jesus wooing me. I feel Jesus drawing me. I feel Jesus tugging at my heart. Maybe that's you today. Maybe it's your time to receive Jesus as your Savior, to take that bread of life and to eat it, to ingest it, to believe that it's from Father God that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for your sins, and He is the bread of life. 
the only one that's going to give you eternal satisfaction where you'll never hunger and thirst again, then you need to receive him. You need to ingest him. You need to receive him as your Savior today. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead to give you life. Bow your heads, if you will. Father God, we thank you for the work that you did for us. Again, Lord, love is spelled W-O-R-K. God, you did a work. Jesus, you did a work. Holy Spirit, you're doing a work right now. And we're going to take a moment. We're going to pray for people to receive Jesus as your Savior. I'm not going to call you to the front or single you out, but you can have an intimate moment between you and Jesus. And the whole church will say a prayer with you. We'll say a prayer for you to confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And you too can eat of the bread of life and be what the Bible calls born again. So right now, with every head bowed, every eye closed, consider the condition of your soul. Forget about who's around you. It doesn't matter. This is an eternal matter. This changes eternity, this decision you make today. Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? If not, let's pray this prayer together and let's receive him as Savior. Everyone has their head bowed, their eyes closed, but I'm going to look around the room and I want to know if you're praying this because I'm going to be praying for you this week as well. Are you ready to receive Jesus as your Savior today? Are you ready to eat the true bread of life? If so, would you just lift your hand up right now and say, Pastor Scott, that's me. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior today. I want to be born again. I want to come out of darkness and come into His marvelous light. Maybe you're watching online. You can do it right where you're at as well. But you can receive Jesus today. Everybody say, Father God, thank you for your love for me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to pay the price for my sins. I thank you that you rose from the dead so that you now can give me new life. I die to myself. Fill me now with your spirit. And Lord Jesus, baptize me in your Holy Spirit and in power. I'm eating the bread of life. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all give the Lord a hand. God's a good God. Listen, uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings in just a moment. So you can go ahead and prepare that if you're giving uh, we're in the in the basket today, and we know many of you give online, many of you auto give. We thank you for that because again, that's all part of the preparation process. Whenever you give today, that's part of the preparation to make sure that people receive the ultimate bread of life. So now, for those of you that receive Jesus today, indicate that on that card, or if you recommitted your life to Jesus today, indicate that on a card that you're going to be putting in the basket. And if you want to be water baptized, we've got a water baptism coming up in November on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, which is always a very special baptism time. Go ahead and indicate that on the card, too, that you want to take your next step to be water baptized. So we'll put these cards in the offering basket when it goes around, unless you are a first-time guest. If you're a first-time guest, hold on to your card. Meet me and Janet at the Welcome Center after the service. we got some... Uh, a gift we want to give you. We want to just get to meet you a little bit. You can give us your card then. We've got a T-shirt for you first time, travel mug if it's second time. But take your card out there, if you will. For the rest of us, we'll put the cards in the basket. Go ahead and make your next step commitments. Put your prayer request on there. It's a good way to communicate. Call it a communication card. Put those on there. Now, as the ushers come forward, I want to just share a little personal story with you. I'm going to let you, in, I'm going to let you inside the heart of a pastor. Um, for years, you know, I try not to, but sometimes I struggle whenever we give an invitation call and people don't raise their hand for salvation. And because I think to myself, well, if you would have done a better job, if you would have communicated better, people would be receiving Jesus. And then I feel like that if I don't say, if you don't hear me say, hey, I see that hand to my right, or I see that hand to my left, or I see that hand in the middle, I feel like all you are thinking, well, nobody's getting saved today. Bad day at Believer's Church. Scott didn't do a good enough job. 
Nobody's getting saved today. Now, you know that's not, you know, that's just how your mind thinks, right? So, yeah, I'm showing you the deep darkness of brain cells, okay? So, uh, this, is, this is how it goes. But you know what? The truth of the matter is the indictment's not on um, just me, is it? Who is the indictment on? All of us. Because there's, there's not lost people here. I can't get anyone saved. I can look at the little black camera up there and say, hey, I hope some of you at home sitting on your couch in your PJs eating your Pop-Tarts are receiving Jesus today. I can hope that. But it breaks my heart when this chair is absent at altar call, at salvation call. This chair needs to be there. You need to help me fill this chair. We've got to get them in here so when we get a salvation call, people will eat of the bread of life and be born again. So, Father God, we're just going to go ahead and thank you for this ahead of time. This is not condemnation. This is just self-checking for all of us. We're going to do what we can do to get this chair full, and we're going to use this money that we're given today, and we're going to leverage that to bring people out of darkness and into your marvelous light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's just go ahead and receive that tithes and offerings today. And uh, let me just tell you guys that uh, what we're going to talk about next week is one more. We're actually adding. I wanted to add one more to the series and uh, be the light. And we're going to talk about the 72 points of light next week. The 72 points of light. After that, a week after that, we're going to have our family worship, family fun day. It's going to be a great celebration, time together worshiping and having fun together on that Sunday as well. But you know, everybody remembers that Jesus had 12 disciples. Do you remember that Jesus also had 72 disciples? And how he commissioned the 12 was different than he commissioned the 72. He commissioned to do two different things. So I want to teach you what I call the 72 method of evangelism. How Jesus commissioned the 72. What he told them to do is something that we can easily bring into our lives. And we can see the results just like the 72 did. So after you've given your offering, feel free to stand up and let's worship together. After we worship together, we have some families that are going to join Believer's Church. off the box Some days I can't find keys to any locks Some days I feel like it's been overblown And then I look at you and I don't feel so alone and I say Hey, hey Let your little light shine Let your little Let your little light shine for the world to 
see it. Let it shine, church. Yeah. All right, have a seat, if you will, real quick. We want to get our two families that are going to join to come on up. Come on up, the McBurney's come up. The Branch family, y'all come on up to the front. Uh, y'all hustle right on up here. There we go. And the, the Hood family is not here currently, are they? Okay, all right, we'll get to it. Y'all just line up right here. We're excited to have these two families joining Believer's Church today and what they've done. Yeah, y'all give them a hand. I'll tell you, we have, uh, we have Paul and Kim McBurney over here. And uh, Paul is a retired policeman from Chatham County. And Kim still currently works as the administrator to the sheriff, to the chief of police. And, and where? In the Savannah Police Department. Okay, so uh, if you get her number, in case you ever need her. But anyway, uh, so, no, don't do that. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be the right thing to do. All right, and then we had the Branch fan. We're super excited to have uh, Calvin here and Ariane here as well. And we have uh, Jari Ogilvie. Jari is pronounced correctly, right? Jari. And then we also have KJ. Hey, KJ. I love that smile on your face. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I see it. I see it there, KJ. All right. So uh, they, listen, they have come to our, our Next Step classes, or they're either in the process. They came to the Newcomer Social Next Step Life Groups, where they learn how to do life together. Next Step Membership, which is definitely required before them joining. And then there's also Next Step Teens, where they're going to be dis uh, discovering their spiritual gifts and learning how to do the preparation for the ultimate meal. So I know that there are various, I think y'all are complete with all yours. And I'm not exactly, I shouldn't start saying where you're at in the process, because I know there may be a few more that need to be picked up. Maybe not. Uh, but anyway that you go through the next step process and you make this commitment that I want to be a part of what God is doing at Believer's Church. And then we bring them to the front and we introduce them to everybody. Then we lay hands on them and we pray for them because we want, we're saying we're going to receive you into our family by prayer and we're just going to agree together to partner together with you to win the world for Christ Jesus. So Janet, come on up if you will. And we anoint them with oil I think we are supposed to have oil. Let's see. All right, who drank the oil? Okay, the, uh, here it is. Here's the oil. Okay, and the oil in Scripture always represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit coming upon people. And, and uh, you know, Calvin, in the Old Testament days, they would take a whole jar and just pour it over your head and it would flow down your beard. It talks about flowing down the beard of Aaron all the way to your garments but uh, we're just gonna get, we're just gonna anoint you, okay? And we're just gonna, we're gonna believe God that uh, He's gonna use you in great, and mighty ways. You and your family. Same thing for the McBurneys as well. And this is what I love. You know, we made a faith confession many years ago when there were just six of us, and we started Believers Church, and we said, "Great people are ready to help us in the right time, in the right ways. People that we know, people that we don't even know yet." And you, know, you guys are some of the great people. I had, when we started this church, I had no idea who you were. And now we're family. Now we're joining together. So as we anoint them and pray for them, y'all extend your hand to them. And we're going to just all agree together. We're going to receive them in the church. We'll start with the Branch family. Father God, we thank you for... We thank you, Lord God, for the Branch family. We thank you, Lord God, for Calvin, Lord God. For, we thank you for what you're going to do in this work, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for Ariane, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for this couple, Jesus, that you brought them here. And you brought these wonderful children, Lord God, for Jari, Lord Jesus. For KJ, Father God, we anoint him with all too. And Father God, as Calvin and his family are coming today, we just lay hands on them, Lord God, and we just pray that your anointing is going to be upon them. Fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord God, let them know your word. Let them know your truth. Lord God, let the anointing of God be upon their lives. Jesus, bless them in ways that they didn't know the, how to do things, but you can help them do it. Things they didn't even realize they could do, they can do by the power of the Holy Spirit because it's not a matter of their works or their flesh, but it's by your power. So let your anointing flow through them. Let them discover their purpose, their destiny. Lord God, let these families walk in divine help and healing if no sickness or disease is coming upon them, Lord God. Bless them, Jesus, and everything put their hands to. They'll be prosperous and successful, all for your kingdom purposes and for your glory. Success according to your standard and your will. 
So, Father God, we just received the Branch Family Believers Church. We receive them. Everyone that receives them today, give me a big hearty. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Father God, we thank you for Paul. We thank you for him, Lord God. We thank you for Kim, and we anoint them before all today. Father God, I thank you that you have called them to this church, that you've gifted them. Lord, there's wisdom and knowledge flowing through them that we can benefit from as we partner together with you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that they understand it's an honor to serve you. Lord, let them also walk in divine health and healing. Bless all that they put their hands to. Let them be prosperous and successful in every way and according to your kind of success, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that they can do more things with us and we can do more things with them. In other words, together we can do great things, together. So we thank you, Father God. We bless them today and we receive them. And everyone that receives the McBurney family says a big hearty. Amen. 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 All right. Well, y'all stay up here if you will. Uh, Janet and I are going to bless the church. We're going to bless you right now. And then I want you to come on up as a member and shake their hands. Tell them welcome to Believer's Church. We're so glad that you're here. We're glad that you are now a part of us. And as they do this, um, let them know that you love them. You know, slip them a 20 or something or 50. Or, you know, not just say, I love you. I want to help you. I want to support you. And uh, let's just have a little bit of loving a loving family time together. So y'all come on up and greet them, okay? So Father God, Janet and I bless this church. We thank you, Jesus, that uh, you are going to let us all be a light that shines bright in the world of darkness. I thank you, Jesus, that we understand the concept that we all come to the table and thirds, Jesus. And I thank you that every believer here, every follower of Christ Jesus will grow to be mature in you. And then they'll push back from the table and they'll bring in the lost. And the lost will be born again and become new babes. And the new babes will grow into the mature. And we thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be a part of this beautiful, wonderful, awesome cycle of salvation. And it's your name we pray and bless. And everyone that believes and receives says, Amen. 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 Let your light shine.